Hi everyone, my name is Vidur and I'm a senior systems engineer in Juniper Networks for Mist Wireless. And today we are going to discuss about how we can create a .1x SSID on the Mist dashboard, a radius SSID. So let me quickly go to the Mist dashboard. Here is how it looks like. This is the uh, organization Vidur that I've created. I've created the site, test site uh, under it. Uh, we have created this in one of our videos. And in the last video where we created a PSK SSID, I did it through the configuration template. This is how, this is what I created for the PSK SSID. And I'm gonna come straight to this page. And we have anyway discussed all these options and what they do in the previous video. So I'm gonna paste the link of that video in the description so that you can visit that and understand what each option means here. So we're gonna keep this video short uh, and click on add a WLAN here. Uh, we'll give it a name of let's say radius underscore SSID underscore test and For now we have discussed all these all these options in the in the last video So again, as I said, I'm going to paste the link for you to go through and understand what these options are and then and, and take a call accordingly I'm going to come straight here, which is uh, the option to do dot one X. This is WPA2 EP authentication I'll select this and the moment I select this, if I if I if I'm here, so I don't see anything fancy here, an option to add a radius server. The moment I select dot WPA2 EAP dot one X, I get a whole bunch of options here which I can use to you know add multiple things here. So I'm gonna start with coming down to dot one X web redirect. What this so we, we we normally don't use it. What it is used for is you know if if the client gets authenticated just fine from the radius server. If I want the client to be re redirected to a different URL, I can enable this and I can actually uh, allow some subnets for it to you know visit be able to be able to visit or or go through a go to once it gets authenticated. So once it gets authenticated from the radius server, it gets an access accept. In the access accept, it gets the URL to which it wants to be redirected. And there it can you know be given some options to do this and that and post which it will be successfully authenticated completely but for now we're gonna just keep it disabled and RATSEC is is another policy what what it does is you know normally you do uh, so with with RATSEC authentication uh, between the missed access point and the radius server you exchange a certificate instead of a shared secret so if I click on enable here it gets an option to write missed and I can click on here and I can add or I can add a server at rad, sec server here basically what we're doing is we're actually exchanging a certificate between the AP and the radius server so I'm going to anyway disable that for now it's not needed uh, I'm going to add a, a radius server here like this I'll just add 10.10.10.10 .10 and port will be authentication port would be 1812 by default shared secret is test1234 I'm just going to reveal it just to be sure it is and Similar to that, I can just do a checkbox here. I want to add one more server, uh, just to be sure. I have two here, 20, 20, 20. And this is again going to be authentication and shared secret is again test one, two, three, four. And I'm good to go. I'll just add it here, sorry. Uh, okay, so similar to that, if I want to do accounting, I can add another ser similar server. But I'm gonna, I can only add just one for this, uh, or I, I can add multiple, but I just, I just want to add just one here. Uh, and here uh, the port will be 1813 which is the accounting port I'll just do never here okay uh, NAS identified we can use we can just leave as of now COA if you want to do change of authorization you can enable and add a server to do that not needed in this scenario for VLANs uh, by default it can be an untagged VLAN of the AP tagged VLAN if you want to put the traffic onto specific VLAN after the client gets authenticated uh, VLAN pool is, is also if you want to define a uh, multiple set of VLANs separated by comma uh, you can do that now whenever a client gets authenticated and, and, and it gets an IP from VLAN number 100 more often than not or I would say always it will get an IP from VLAN number 100 only so it, it kind of binds the MAC address, last four octets of the MAC address last four digits of the MAC address for the VLAN and that's how it understands that you know if, if, if I got an access if I got an IP address in VLAN number 100 the next time also I should get an IP from VLAN number 100 only also so that's that's how you configure it the other option is dynamic this is interesting because now it's it's basically letting us know uh, it, it it works on different parameters returned from the radio server let's say for example you're using a Cisco ice 
it can actually understand uh, which which uh, vlan it, it, it returns from cisco ice in in the air, airspace interface name this is this is what you can define in the ice as well and and enter the vlan and the interface name where and which 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 vlan you want to get from the radius server so it you can have add multiple options here with different interfaces name you can have you can add multiple vlans which will be returned from uh, cisco ice if you're using any other radius server uh, then you can actually use a standard tunnel private group id here as well and you can define which vlan the client goes to depending on uh, the information returned from the radius server so these are the four options for vlan normally we we do it with tagged or, or pool depending on the customer scenario for different pocs that are being run here you can actually or different pocs or proof of concepts that that partners and distributors run for for different customers you can actually uh, define the the options accordingly so for for this is this is all you need to do in, in the mist dashboard i'm going to just simply create uh, let me just do an untagged here and, and do a create this is all you want to do for uh, radius server authentication on the mist side what you want to do on the ice side or the radius server side is just make sure that you have the mist access point added as a client in the network devices in the in, in ice right it has to be authentic it has to be trusted or if you want you can add a, a, a whole a whole complete uh, subnet of of the access point where you know let's say the we have 100 access points and we have uh, the IP addresses of 100 access points in, in a single subnet. You can add that entire subnet in Cisco Eyes and, and trust that so that the client connected on the AP gets authenticated. The only difference, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the client getting authenticated in, a, in an old kind of an architecture where the AP is terminated on the controller is that in, in that the client is a supplicant the controller is the authenticator and the radius server is the authentication server. But in a cloud-based environment in, like in MIST, the APs will act as the authenticator, not, not the, we don't have a controller. So the APs will act as an authenticator. So here, the client is the supplicant, the AP becomes the authenticator and the radius server is of course the radius server. Authentication server is of course the radius server. So instead of adding a WLC IP address in the ICE, we add the IP address of the AP in ICE here. That's the only difference there is. And uh, so MIST integrates with almost every radius server out there, whether it's Cisco, IS, ClearPass, or Jump radius server, Microsoft radius server, Open radius server, anything, MIST will integrate it. MIST will integrate with that really well. So that's pretty much what uh, what I had to tell you on the radius society dot one x. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions about anything, any option in the MIST dashboard that you see that I have not covered. Uh, drop a message down in, in the comments and I will be more than happy to uh, you know answer the answer answer that for you uh, Once again, uh, all these options here, which I've left for this video are covered in the video in which we configured the PSK society and I can I'm gonna put the link again in the description so that you have it handy and and, and go through when you need that okay. Thank you so much guys for your time and uh, hope you have a good day